Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, August 20th, 2021. I am Dave Biddle. I am very happy to be joined by Jonah Booker for his usual Friday visit. A lot to get into, my friend. Let's start with the Buckeyes getting on the board in the 2023 class in recruiting. Ty Lockwood, tight end, number eight tight end in the country, number 142 overall player in the country. If there's eight tight ends in the top 142 in the country in 2023, it tells me there's some good tight ends in that class. He's a young man out of Thompson's Station, Tennessee. Good get for the Buckeyes here, Jay Book. They've got the 2023 class off and going. They're continuing to recruit extremely well at the tight end position. Uh, As you mentioned, the number eight tight end in the composite he uh, definitely has a high ranking there with a 94.55. And you look at his offer list early on, even though uh, he's a 2023 kid, he still has already 23 offers. So you'd like to see it. Um, 6'5", 225. So he's a big guy right now. And a lot of Ohio State fans, they've been a little nervous lately because of recruiting, having think thinking that Ohio State's on a cold spell. But Ty Glockwood, he, he's a guy that, they like early on in the process. They offered them fairly early. Um, if you look at the Ohio State roster, they're loading up at the tight end position. So that tells me they plan to properly utilize these guys. And I, I'm looking at that that tight end room, and they're continuing to put in a lot of big boys with a lot of uh, athleticism. All right, let's talk about some Ohio State football. We got the recruiting out of the way early. C.J. Stroud, to me, when – I asked Ryan Day earlier this week, do you have a starting quarterback? And he said, no, we're not ready to name a starter, but C.J. Stroud has gained separation. He's the leader. That was, in my opinion, Ryan Day's way of saying C.J. Stroud is the starter. Your thoughts, sir? I I absolutely believe C.J. Stroud is the guy. As Ryan Day had mentioned, he's starting to separate from the pack. I thought it was going to take a monumental effort from Kyle McCord or Jack Miller to unseat him heading into fall camp. And from all of the reports coming from you and a lot of the guys that practice and people that I've talked to close to the program is he's going to be the starter and he is going to be a heck of a, a quarterback here at Ohio State. He has been looking phenomenal. Garrett Wilson has compared him to Russell Wilson because his accuracy is so pinpoint that once the wide receivers get out of their break, the football is right there. Is right there in their faces, right there in their numbers. And that's what you want to see. He also has the dual threat ability where he can make you pay with his legs. And the thing that you want to hear the most from your head coach when talking about your quarterback is what Ryan Day said when it came to C.J. Stroud. Is one, he protected football. Two, he's moving the offense up and down the field. And three, once he get into the red zone, he's scoring touchdowns. With all of the talent that's surrounding him and at Ohio State, that's what you want to see from your quarterback. He's more than a game manager. He's a dynamic playmaker, but he's doing all the little things that you want to see from your starting quarterback because at the end of the day, just get the football to your playmakers. And as long as he can do that without turning over the football, this Ohio State offense will be uh, an absolute machine putting up 40-plus points a game. Yeah, they're going to shatter school records, in my opinion, offensively this year. And that's uh, – I don't say that lightly because there's been some tremendous offenses here recently. All right, let's look at backup quarterback. I think it's going to be Kyle McCord, but, like, I mean, Jack Miller's in the mix. we got Quinn Ewers here now. What do you think they're going to do with Quinn Ewers this year? Do you think he'll play in garbage time? you think he'll play more than that? Do you think Kyle McCord has the backup job locked down? Just talk to me about the other three QBs. Yeah, I think it's going to be Kyle. Uh, I thought it was very eye-opening when Garrett Wilson said he's the hardest-working quarterback he's ever met. I thought that is uh, tremendous praise coming from him. I I do think Kyle still has a ways to go. He's developing. He's not there yet, but he's a heck of a quarterback there. And I think when you're looking at what you need and when it comes to the quarterback position – 
He fits. He checks all of those boxes. I think if there is a situation where if Kyle was the third string quarterback going into the season, you're probably looking at a transfer with uh, Quinn Ewers in the in the shadows lurking there. So I think you're going to have C.J. Stroud, Kyle McCord, Jack Miller, one, two, three. When it comes to Quinn Ewers, he's not going to probably see the field this year unless it's an absolute mop up time. He's not even getting. Um, you know, live reps when it comes to team periods right now. He's just getting acclimated to the college football game. He's going to go down there to the scout team and run that scout team offense. He's coming in late. He still needs to digest the, the playbook. But if you're to see him on the field at any point, it's going to be uh, mop-up duties. He's only going to be able to play a certain amount of games um, because you don't want to blow a red shirt for – for any type of, you know, just garbage time. So you could probably see them within those few games that they allow freshmen to play in to keep their eligibility. But I think your quarterback depth chart is set. They're going to be breaking out of camp here pretty soon. We're about two weeks away. The, that final week is going to be all Minnesota preparation. So if anybody's going to make a move on C.J. Stroud, they have one week, one week to do it. And with him playing well and playing at a high level every all signs points to him be locked in as your day one starter once they snap the ball and kick the ball off in minnesota yeah very well said for the listeners out there expectations for quinn ewers let's hope he plays well as the scout team quarterback and then he'll get some garbage time this year that's the expectations for quinn ewers unless there's injuries we never know i mean 2014 happened you never know if there's injuries to cj stroud you know, and Kyle McCord and maybe even Jack Miller, then uh, Quinn Ewers could be in the conversation. But I think he's just going to be the best scout team quarterback in the country this year. All right, my man, let's move on. Offensive line, I love the nickname they have, the Monstars. I don't know if G. Scott Sr. gave them the nickname. That's the first time I heard it, though. I'm going to give him credit. I love these this group. And they're not just the biggest offensive line we've seen. They are the biggest. But, like, they move well, too. I love this offensive line, Jay Book. Yeah, I, I love it. I'm excited to see what they're going to do. They're going to be uh, pretty dominant up front. They're a massive unit, but you look at the guys that they have, they're, to me, they're all going to be playing in the NFL. And I know we had in our boarding house yesterday, you know, one of the sources uh, from the NFL that went to practice, he was there to get eyes on Thayer Mumford and Nicholas Petit Ferrer. And the guy that really jumped off the field for him was Dewan Jones. Uh, you know, everybody knows he's a massive guy, but just seeing how much he's developed since the last since last season, you know, with the with our source saying that once he sets that anchor and he gets those big bear paws on you, he is pretty darn dominant at the right tackle position. So it, I think for them to make that move with their Mumford being kicked inside. You have to really like what you're seeing out of Dewan Jones. And if NFL personnel is saying he's now on their radar after getting eyes on him, tells me that this offensive line has the potential to be really special. If you look at the running backs that they have, those guys are going to love running behind this offensive line. And the, the big question mark is, is can those guards really get to that next level? when they're asked to pull because Paris Johnson and Thayer Mumford, those are some lengthy, those are some linky guys. Those are typically your tackles uh, and you're asking them to move like a guard, getting to that next level with the kick out blocks and stuff. But I have no doubt in my mind that they'll be able to handle that without any issues. Let's look at the linebackers. That's been a concern of mine. I've mentioned on the show many times, but I'm hearing really good things about Cody Simon I mean, really good things about Taraja Mitchell. As I like to joke about every year on the show, I say this is going to be Taraja Mitchell's breakout year. This year, I mean it. But seriously, I mean, Taraja Mitchell's looking good. Cody Simon, I'm hearing great things about. We'll see who the third linebacker is when they do the, you know, base 4-3, you know, probably Dallas Gant. Um, you know, when they go with, you know, the bullet, obviously Craig Young will be in there. It's kind of that third linebacker, that hybrid. Where are you at on the linebackers? You feeling good or not so much? I'm in the wait and see mode. I think they have the potential to be pretty good. I know the linebackers have have been the, the, the source of a lot of discussion on our message board where a lot of guys are, are concerned about the linebacker position. Um, 
and, and they have a right to have their uh, skepticism. But be, and the reason you have to to give them that right to be skept, a, a skeptic is you haven't seen these guys that are going to be on the field playing at a high level because they're come they're coming behind, you know, Pete uh, Pete Werner and. and guys that are off to the NFL plant that's going to be playing on Sundays, but they're very talented. I, I like, as you mentioned, what I'm hearing about Cody Simon, even Taraja Mitchell had a lot of praise about him, about his development and Taraja Mitchell himself. I think he's poised to have a monster season. He's probably going to be the captain of the middle of the defense there. He's been in the program for quite a bit of time. And from what I've heard, talking to people closer to the program, he's like a player's coach on the field because he knows his defense. He knows what to do. He's going to be the guy that helps get everyone set. Uh, but I think they have a lot of talent. They have a lot of potential, but I just need to see it on the field. And once I see them playing at that high level that I expect to see them at, then I can you know, give a sigh of relief because I just need to see it right now. I just need to see it because they haven't played a lot of football. Last thing, defensive backs, right in your wheelhouse, you being a former DB in college football yourself, where are you at on this young but talented defensive backfield? Yeah, they, they have a lot of talent. That's going to be my biggest question mark uh, when it comes to the, to do the defense. They absolutely have to play better. They, the way they played last year was unacceptable. They have a, everybody back. All of the excuses are out the window. You've had a full off season. You had a fall camp to get everything uh, situated. You're going against arguably the best wide receiver room in college football. You, when you play these other games on Saturday, the guys that you're going against are not as good as the guys that you've practiced against for this past month. And, you know, the past month in spring as well. So to me, I think, these younger guys are going to need to step up. I like what I'm hearing out of true freshman Denzel Burt. It, it sounds like he is really bringing his game to the next level. Someone that was uh, a really quiet recruitment, didn't even visit Ohio State and committed. They, he was brought in as an athlete, and from the day that he stepped on campus, he's been technically sound. I know the coaches were raving in the spring about how polished his footwork is, and I know you had in your uh, practice report that he was getting some run with the first team at three defensive pass breakups. So that's what you want to hear. The, the key to it is you need seven banks and you need Cam Brown to stay healthy. If they can do that, they're going to be they're going to be solid. And and with Lathan Ransom getting rep in the slot corner there, I think he brings a combination of size and speed to where he's versatile enough to play safety and he's also athletic enough to come down and play in the box as a as a slot corner so they do have options there and then Josh Proctor on the back end you know he's a he's now a, considered a veteran I thought he played really well at in spurts last year so if he can build upon that I think this secondary can write the shit um, that's going to be, be the biggest thing because personally if they do not play at a high level, I think the writing might be on the wall for Kerry Cones because Ohio State is not going to stand for having one of the worst pass defense in college football, especially when you look at all of the talent that they're bringing in. I know everybody had a, the excuse of a COVID year and things were kind of wonky, but all of those excuses are out the window. It's now put up or shut up time for Kerry Cones in that defense. And I have uh, the confidence that they're going to be able to get back to playing at a championship level on that side of the football. Great insights, as always, from Jonah Booker. Thank you very much, Jay Book. Thank you to all the listeners out there for tuning in the show. We appreciate that very much. Hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Mm -hmm.